Welcome back to The Word on Woodward. Uh, time now for the headliner presented by Miller Lite. And let's bring in our guest, the uh, Assistant General Manager of the Red Wings, the General Manager of the Grand Rapids Griffins, and a consultant to the Toledo Walleye. He has all his bases covered, Ryan Martin. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate your time. First and foremost, how are you holding up? Uh, well, thanks for having me. First of all, Art, uh, appreciate it. Um, we are very healthy, thankfully. Uh, my wife and kids, we've spent an awful lot of time together uh, the last five weeks. My kids, uh, as as all kids in the area, their, their school's been canceled. Uh, but they're doing online schooling, which has been a challenge at times. Uh, my daughter likes the flexibility, uh, which is nice. Um, so it, it's great. We've gotten some time to spend together, and, and uh, we've been busy on the hockey side, that's for sure. I, I'm under the impression, because everything was just halted, and, and whether or not the league comes back, the AHL and the NHL, Will this have any impact on player development? Because depending on where these players are now uh, in the globe, on the globe someplace, that they may not have ice. I mean, they're trying to work out. I know you've given them programs. Um, could this be a step back for some of the uh, uh, some of the players, the Red Wing fans, the young guys that they're looking forward to to someday step into uh, you know the lineup here in Detroit? Well, we, we hope not. And, you know, Sean uh, Horkoff, Dan Cleary, Nick Cronwell, Brandon Narado, they've all been involved not only in the, the player exit meetings, but they've had a whole nother round of of one on one meetings with all of our players uh, prior to uh, this week uh, to talk about that very issue. Um, certainly our sports science department led by Mike Barwis and our group in Detroit and Grand Rapids, they were able to furnish our players um, not only with um, off-ice workouts uh, that one can do without any equipment, but some guys have access to limited equipment or maybe a, a small gym or a home gym. Um, we talked to a couple players yesterday who live in different parts of the world where they do have access to gyms. Uh, you know, everybody's on a, a different sort of shutdown mode, and, and some of the players do have access. So. And our ability to, um, you know, provide them the resources in, a, in anything from a limited to a full capacity and the importance of maintaining um, a regular timeline for these guys, we think it's actually an advantage. Uh, you know, Sean and, and Dan and Nick and the player development people, the message that they've been sending the players is we think this is an advantage that you can get, done, uh, get started with your off-season training sooner rather than later. Um, and so it's, it's too bad that, that Grand Rapids is not playing playoff games right now as the American League normally would. But for those players that are down there, we see it as an advantage for them to start their offseason training. It, it seemed to be kind of a dicey situation this year because you want Grand Rapids to be in the playoffs. You want those young guys to experience a playoff run, yet you may want them to come up to Detroit. How difficult was it to decide who comes up, who doesn't come up, you know, the underlying interest is, is what is in the player's best interest, uh, both from a short and long term uh, development plan. And, uh, you know, when you weigh those factors and you look at how many minutes the player is going to play uh, in the American League versus the NHL, what situations uh, is the player going to play in um, at, at both levels? And, uh, you know, to a lesser degree, uh, the impact it would have on the minor league team, if you recall them. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're doing what's best for the Detroit Red Wings. And certainly in the back of our mind, we're aware of, of what taking a guy like Mo Sider out of Grand Rapids would have done late in the year. But at the end of the day, we've got to make sure it's in the best interest of the Red Wings. I, I would imagine you have to be pretty pleased with the season that Grand Rapids was putting together because it was such a herky-jerky season. From early November on, it was, uh, you know, six teams in our division competing for two spots, which uh, when every, everybody was competitive, Manitoba, San Antonio, Rockford, Chicago, ourselves. And I, that's great because, as you know, the American League, it's, um, it's a divisional league. You play a ton of games against teams in your division. You know, we would go on 12, 13 game stretches where all we were playing was games in our division. Uh, then you'd go pop out and play the odd game outside your division and then come back in and go on another 10 or 12 game run. So 
The good, good thing about that is you can make up ground quickly in the American League if you happen to lose some ground. The bad thing is, is teams can make up ground on you quickly, even if you have a, a lead. So I think it's a phenomenal uh, development model because what it does is it's a playoff game every night. And that's really what it was like, you know, when we bust into Rockford and have to come home and play Chicago Friday, Saturday, back to back. These these are all mini playoff games because these points are so important and the, and, uh, and the teams are all fighting for it in, in what, what is, I think, one of the top two divisions in the American League. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm really happy with uh, the, the year down there. And Steve and Pat Rubik and I are pleased with, with how the players were developing and, and the coaches did a phenomenal job of, of uh, utilizing the young players in important situations and, and having patience with their development and some of the mistakes that they were making and, and being good teachers at the same time. So I, I think there's a lot of positives to come uh, from this year, even if we don't resume playing at the American League level. Uh, there's definitely a lot of positives to take from the year we had. Ryan, I want to ask you about a couple of the uh, prospects that, that, that played for Grand Rapids this year. Maybe a quick assessment, and then I want to ask you maybe a general question because uh, I can go on forever. And I could talk to you all day, and uh, you know, especially being cooped up. But uh, uh, I, I know we're under a, a bit of a time limit here. But Mo Cider, I remember talking to you at the summer showcase in Plymouth this year, where you were a little bit apprehensive. You knew he could probably play in the AHL, but it's kind of a uh, 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 the second best league in the world, a very physical league, and you were afraid that maybe, not afraid, but apprehensive that guys might take runs at him, but yet he, I would imagine, has exceeded everyone's expectations. Uh, you know, he dished it out, he took it, and he was uh, a, a huge contributor, played a lot of minutes for the Griffins. Yeah, I, I think you summed it up well. And, you know, from, uh, you know, first of all, he's coming from a men's league over over in Germany, and I think his talent level was such that we felt um, his adjustment to the American League uh, would be smoother in certain areas of his game. We certainly felt his hockey sense and, and skating and talent level was appropriate to play at that level. But to your point, um, it, it's a tough league and it's a league of men and, and, it's, and it's a rough league. And, uh, you know, young guys can get taken advantage of at times. And, you know, I think moving from the bigger ice to the smaller ice also, there's a period of adjustment in terms of time and space and, and how, how long a player has to make plays, and they've got to get used to that. So I, I think there was a, a couple of small growing pains early. Uh, he quickly adapted. Um, he did very well. I mean, I think for an 18-year-old to come into that league and the put up 22 points um, in 49 games and to show, um, you know, basically almost week to week or day to day improvement uh, is really exciting to see. I mean, he had a, he had a tremendous year. Um, you know, the coaches did a great job of utilizing them in uh, important situations, down by a goal, a couple minutes to play, up by a goal, a couple minutes to play, protect the lead. Uh, penalty killing came along. He, he got power play time and, and was running one of the power play units at the end of the season. So, um, you know, he, he did some really good things in terms of his development. Uh, you know, I, I think my personal view is that it was a, a phenomenal year of development and you know, we couldn't have asked for much more in terms of, of uh, the progress that he made in, in the maturation in his game. Uh, center is a position of need for the Red Wings, as most uh, fans know. I want to ask you about a couple of guys that were uh, down in GR. And uh, first one up would be Joe Valeno, uh, very young player. He qualified to be in the AHL because he had exceptional status in the Quebec League, uh, meaning he played at 15. So he had four years in the Quebec League or the Canadian Hockey League, the CHL. Uh, so he was eligible to play. He came in, some growing pains, but since the World Junior Tournament, where he was part of uh, Canada's uh, gold medal uh, winning team, uh, he seems to finally hitting his stride a bit. Yeah, and again, I'd agree with that assessment too. Uh, you know, we, we were young down the middle um, in Grand Rapids. Uh, you know, Dominic Turgeon is a, a veteran player, but really we had Michael Rasmussen, Joe Valeno, and Chase Pearson. So the, the great thing for our young centers in the organization um, – was that they got to play uh, a lot of minutes and in, in, and in a lot of important situations. Um, 
And that certainly holds true for Joe. So a credit to the coaches again. Uh, they put him in an important role to start the year. Uh, they integrate him into the penalty kill. And Dom, uh, Dom Turgeon is one of the best penalty killers and defensive forwards in the American Hockey League. And, and oftentimes, uh, you know, Joe rode shotgun with him as a one-two pair uh, in terms of penalty killing. And, and Dom did a really good job mentoring him. Uh, so that that was great to see. And, and you're right. Um, you know, I was at the World Junior. Uh, so I saw Joe play firsthand. And, and you know, he definitely took another step uh, when he came back. His confidence was a little bit higher. Uh, you know, his ability to make plays was greater. He was stronger. Uh, so not only did I think Joe utilize his experience in the American League to have a real successful World Junior, uh, which he helped Canada win gold, but um and vice versa, he also took the experience that he, he garnered at the World Junior and brought it back to the American League. And I think he was, uh, you know, really hitting his stride when the season ended. He, he's having a really good year. Michael Rasmussen, I know, wanted to play center. He was up in Detroit last year uh, for the whole season because he would have had to get sent back down to junior to, to his, uh, uh, his, his club uh, uh, in the Western League. So he was a Red Wing all year. He went down to learn the center position. He started off very, very well, had some back injuries, nagging injuries yet. Uh, you know, I've always said the most impressive thing about Michael Rasmussen for me is for a man his size, his hand-eye coordination in front of the net is absolutely extraordinary. Uh, I know the injury was a bit of a setback, but it looked like he is really embracing that role of becoming a center at the NHL level. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's too bad that, uh, you know, the rules precluded us from sending him to the American League last year because he probably um, could have used some more seasoning at that level. We felt like he was in sort of a an in-between uh, phase in his development, and we felt uh, playing at the professional level would do more for his development in the long term than going back to junior. That's just, you know, one of the facts uh, uh, of players in that situation. So this year it wasn't necessarily a bad thing for him to go down and play. And, and you're correct. I think his first, uh, I think he had about eight points in his first nine or 10 games. And, and he was playing very well, um, playing primarily at center, getting time on the power play. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a lingering injury kind of slowed him down. And, you know, I think he, um, he was pushing to get back sooner. Um, and, and he really wasn't, hundred uh, percent healthy till a much later point in the year. So uh, it, it's, it's been a challenge for him in the middle part of the year to, to deal with that injury and to play um, as many minutes as we needed him to play down there to help with his development. Uh, but we feel he's in a good spot. I think he, he's healthy now. I think he felt good about his game. Um, you know, 22 points in, in 35 games. It's basically a little under half a season. So to be on pace, as a 20 year old, uh, 21 year old with, uh, um, you know, about 44, 45 points at that level is really good. And, and to your point, uh, he does an exceptional job in front of the net on the power play. He's a big man. He knows how to hold on to pucks down low. And uh, we don't have a ton of size in, in the lineup down there. So he certainly uh, filled that void very well. I know there's several other players, Ryan. I'll have to save that for the next time. But overall, it does sound like from talking to you, that as uncertain as the times are, it, it appears the Red Wing organization is trying to maintain business as usual as much as you can. Yeah, for sure. Um, and, you know, I, I talked to some agents around the league and other executives on other teams. And I think a lot of teams are operating similar to how we are. But, uh, um, you know, I, I almost feel like uh, I'm glad I don't have my 45 minute commute each way because I might not get all my work done every day. I'm pretty busy. And, and I think that's how everybody's treating this. And we're trying to stay busy and trying to stay focused. And the days are going by quicker. And hopefully it's only a matter of time before we're back playing hockey. Ryan Martin, assistant general manager of the Red Wings, general manager of the Griffins and consultant to the Toledo Walleye. Thank you for joining us on uh, the headliner presented by Miller Lite. I do appreciate it, Ryan. It's always great to catch up with you. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you again very, very soon. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Art. You too. Take care.